Hello my gems and welcome back to my channel. So this is part two of us making our bee curtain, fly curtain, um, basically whatever you want to call it really. But you guys know exactly what I mean now. So yeah, all our first batch that we've made up and done are all nice and dry. I see a nice cat hair sticking out the top there. Da da. But yeah, they're all dry, as you can see, all ready to go. Um, but yeah, all ready to go and everything. Uh, I'm really, really excited to be doing these. And so, yeah, um, about it really. So yeah, this first batch, all done all ready to go all different color i'm just doing all different colors i'm not focusing on one color i want to be very very colorful but if you guys want to you can stick to just a couple of colors but i'm just using up all my bits and bobs trying to use up my smaller amount of drills and everything just to try and use a bit up really because sometimes when i'm doing spares projects i i've got all these little bags of drills and i don't have enough like all my spares I don't have enough to do bigger projects with them or anything. So I just got all these little tiny little bags, loads and loads that have been gifted to me. So I'm thinking, right, what can I do with them? What can I do with them? And I suddenly thought, you know, when I thought about this, I thought, right, this will be ideal because I can use up all the bits and pieces and everything else. A bit of glue there. Glue. Right. So let's get cracking and let's see exactly how we get on with this part. Hopefully it's going to be a few parts. But obviously these are actually, you'd be surprised how time consuming they are. But I find if I do them that way, just let you straight up instead of fitting them in each other, it'll take a bit quicker. So yeah, I'll be surprised I've been cheating a little bit just to try and get done a little bit quicker. That is a couple of days work there. So yeah, so let's change the angle and let's, get cracking with more of these okay right so let's get cracking on a few more of these and, and what i will also do in this video i will um do one string of the ones that are already sealed to see how it will look so um I'll quickly, I'll quickly get this one done and then I will quickly show again how I am splitting the pens. There's two ways I do it. Um, either split the pens and put the tape on or put the tape on then split the pens. So it's quite it's quite simple. The worst the hardest part is um using a craft knife to score around to make a groove. So when I snap it, it snaps along the line I've scored in the pen. But yeah, they are quite, obviously I'm, I can't get as far as I want with my spares projects. Cause also, I also obviously do, um, like normal diamond paints too. So I have to split my time between the two. So it means I don't spend as much time on my spares as I like, or as much time on a review item as much as I want to. So I have to try and spread my time evenly between the both. And sometimes I get a bit carried away with one or the other. And I'm like, oh, I need to go back and do the other one. So that's the case again for the spares projects. So I'm doing like random colours, um, all different colours, um, just using up all the, mainly using up the bits that wouldn't be enough for like a, like a large section on a spares projects. So that is the plan, Batman. Um, I need to put more wax in this pen. I hope I've got enough here to cover this pen. I should just about have. I hope I'm on screen.
No, if they can be fiddly, and after a while, like my fingers do cramp up, so I have to stop because it's like holding like awkward positions. But it's okay because you know I can come backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards between it, so. I am very, very lucky because I do have like some friends that send me their spares so that I know that um, I'm not going to run out because I don't do, um, I mainly do squares for diamond paintings because to be honest, you know, I do prefer squares, square drill, the like the finished effect of squares. And... So that means I don't really have many, I don't really get many rounds in spares. So, um, but luckily, I have some very good friends that do send me their spares. Which means I don't run out, basically. And I am always grateful when my friends send me spares because obviously, like, it... It means that I've got rounds for spares projects and squares for spare projects. And I've got plenty of each. Like, my friend Graham, he always sends me his spares. And I've got a whole ton from him. Um, he, which I'm always grateful. He always keeps, my, keeps um, his spares and then sends them on to me. So I'm always grateful for that. Always, always grateful for that. And um, Helen sent me some spares too, which I'm always grateful for. So, yeah, I'm always grateful for some spares. And then Debbie um, sent me a load of pens. And because I'm going to be like getting together a load of like little um, stickers. I'm gonna get in a load of little sticker kits and um, then I'm gonna be like separating all the stickers and the drills and everything and then donating them to my nephew's school. So she sent me pens for that too. So I do have more than enough pens to still do it. And I know like obviously this will take quite a few pens, but honestly, I've. I've still got like tons and tons and tons and tons. Part of me's like debating, do I um what you call it? Like get some trays and deck you know, the um green trays, our favourite trays. Well, not my favourite trays. Me and them green trays, um I have a little bit of a bad history because I got one in um, uh, last year. I brought myself from AliExpress a diamond paint oven in Canada. And I was so excited because it was something completely different. And I was trying to like think of like different things. Like, and I wanted to really like, I thought it would be something different and fun. And, you know, but. It turned out far from that, and it was the biggest disappointment ever. And one of the days, they they gave a green tray. And everybody that's been doing this hobby for a little while will know that those green trays soon mount up. And you do not need a million of them. And when I've got a green tray in one of the days, I was like, why? Everyone has so many of these green trays, and... Yeah, that was kind of like, that was really disappointing to get, you know, the green trays. Do you know what? I cleaned this tray just before I started this video and it is absolutely filthy again. So it just shows how sometimes dirty some of your drills get. And I mean, like, I, I cleaned the tray with...
I had to get some bleach or something and just bleach the, the inside of it. That is dirty. Right, that's so drying. Let me just show you guys how I do a. And again. Need my pen, need a pen. Hopefully, this will be long enough. Let me check the length. So, I'm using they're slightly different length ones. Some are smaller than others. There we go, that's a good example. So, here's two different pens. And as you can see, they are both different sizes by a good centimetre, I'd say. So, I'm not using the smaller ones. I'm using the larger ones that are over 10 centimetres. Let me just check that you can actually see me on screen. Yeah. So, yeah, a bit of a dreary day today. So, that's what I'm doing. I'm using the ones that are slightly longer. So, get our double sided tape. The other day, in the first video, I did show um, I split it in half first. But I found I do save a little tiny bit of time by putting the tape on first and then don't worry if it goes a bit um, crinkled honestly it won't notice because it soon flattens out once the paper's off and then the second one so i am using two different size uh double side tape um as you can see but i find these two fit perfectly around the pen so that's why i'm using these two sizes i do have a couple more rolls of this size as well so which is handy for me um and i can get more of this size from the works so the works sell this size and this size normally so you can get both of them sizes easily right then we put our pen on and score around the five centimeter mark and what I do I just like cut around it. So now I've gone to the plastic. I'm using a more rubbishy, well not rubbishy, but I'm using a craft knife that I know that wasn't that expensive for me. This one I got in a little set um, from Poundland. So anybody in the UK go and check out Poundland. They might still have it, I'm not sure. Not 100% sure if they still have them. Um, I bought this set a little while ago. Uh, last year, year before, some of that. And there was a whole set of this pen. Um, the other pen that came with it, it wasn't that good. But this one is really, really strong. So for my stronger project, like for things like this, it's perfect. And um, yeah, so and it comes with a load of blades too, which I thought four quid, I thought that was a bargain, so I grabbed one and this one is pretty strong, so and it's got a nice thick handle on it. Right, so now I've scored around the edge, which sure I've done it all properly. So it's just basically cut into the plastic. And then once I've cut pile into the plastic put pressure there and it snaps and it's quite a clean snap as well so which is good and then we can just decorate the next one so what color shall i use at this time i'll use this blue this light up blue Here we go, and then pull off your paper. You might need tweezers because sometimes it doesn't quite stay on. 
There we go. And then we can get started. Right, I need to change this wax out, 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 out. I have a whole ton of waxes here. I might have to do a video on the, on the different kinds of waxes. But my go-to is, um, I, I use double-sided in my metal tip, which I works really, find works brilliantly because I find that the wax runs out really quick in that. And then in my plastic ends, which I find works better for the spares projects. I use um, the pink wax and this pink wax I got from Catered or blue wax or whatever colour wax but I tend to use this one more because it stays soft the whole time because it's in a thing and it seems to be a much softer wax so and then I just start from the bottom Try and get them on straight. Like so. And there we have it. Bear me a second, that's my husband. Sorry about that. My husband called um, as I was chatting to him and I was on loudspeaker and carried it on. But I will quickly show you how I pull out the pen. Some just pull out really easy and some you got really... Literally, once you pulled it and then they just pop out like so. And then that's another one done. And I will show you the ones I've done since I the first video. And there you go. So quite a few. Um, not as many as last time yet, though. But I've done the different ones. I do quite like the multicolour. Especially, I got a bag of um, mixed. Um, I was like, yeah, I use them, and then I normal mixed drills as well. So. I did, I used a little few of them because I've got a big old bag of um, mixed drills. Uh, so I was like, right. Well, I've got quite, I think. Well, I've got this one. I'm pretty sure I've got another one somewhere and I've got like squares mixed as well. But not too many. Well, it is quite a few. It's like another big bag like that, but that's okay. Absolutely okay. So I'll quickly get another one of these done and do a little bit of talky talky because I know some of you guys like talky talky. And we have some more of these blues. And I've got, a, I think some of you might be a little bit excited about this. Some of you will not even have a clue who I'm talking about, but some of you will know who I'm talking about. So, so, um, I get up on, what day was it? Monday, Monday. Yeah, I was obviously, I work nights, husband work days. And um, I get up and husband's already home from work. Really excited. And I, I've, you know, I've had a brilliant day at work. I was like, fantastic, that's great. He goes, you won't believe who I met today. I was like, well, who? And he went, I met Shane and Kian from Westlife. They came in to work and he was so excited. So, so excited. My husband is a massive Westlife fan. 
So he majorly like he was just like so excited, really you know, telling me about it. He went, I can't believe it. They stood there and oh my god, I can't believe I met Shane and Kim from Westlife. I can't believe it. I was like, oh no, that's nice of you. I'm not a massive. I like one or two of their songs, but. I wouldn't say I was like a big Westlife fan, but my husband, he is a big Westlife fan. He absolutely loves Westlife. You know, he listens to their music and everything else. So my husband has a very um, peculiar taste for a man. You know, your average man like type of music, but you know, it's what he likes to listen to and that's fine. You know, my, my taste in music is completely different to his. Mine is more like clubby type music and um, stuff like that. So, like Set You Free and all type of music like that. All the all that type type of clubby type music, you know. Back in the day when I used to go out on the town as a youngster, you know, I I don't know how I I I, I like being in bed now. I said time. I don't like being up too late. I struggle these days, like, oh, I'm old, I feel old. Uh, I don't know how I used to go out three times a week when I was a kid. No, not a kid, but a young adult, you know. So yeah, um, he was so excited. And I was like, what, did you get an autograph or a photo? He was like, no, I was too shy. And he get, must have get asked all the time and... I didn't want to upset them or nothing. I was like, I'm pretty sure. I said, well, how were they? Were they nice? Were they friendly? And he said, yeah, they were so nice, so friendly, really, really polite. I said, well, you should have just judged how their mood was and asked them. He was like, yeah, I know, but I, I, I didn't want to and, you know, upset them. I said, no, that's fine. I said, he said, I said, but... Um, he said they were really nice and everything. So I was really pleased with him because he is a massive Westlife fan. And yeah, so he got to meet, you know, Shane and Kim from Westlife. You know, he was so excited. And um, yeah, I said to him, so chances are you're going to meet other people where you are. Because he works like just outside an airport, one of our major airports here in the UK, not like the big one like Heathrow, but, you know, it's still a pretty big airport and it's classed as one of the London airports. So, um, yeah, he was super excited and everything else, so... And I was really pleased because he is a massive Westlife fan. So, yeah, if any of you guys are fans of Westlife, let me, don't know, let me know. Because he is. He is a massive, massive fan of Westlife. He was absolutely in cloud nine when he came home from work that day, I tell you. So I got to meet Shane again from Westlife. And I was like, oh, bless him. Uh, yeah, and he said they were so polite and really, really friendly. So that was nice. So, yeah. So that happened to my husband last um, Monday, just gone. Yeah, so he was so excited. Um... Almost done with this one, and I could string along the other one. String, make try and make one string. I just hope this video won't be too long for you guys. I really do. That'll do. Not perfect, but that'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Right. So we're going to grab um, some ones that are dry and everything, and then I shall. Um, what's the word? Get some stringed up. All right. Two seconds. Oh, you've got to turn the light on. So I've got a 
just normal string, nothing fancy or nothing. So, what I'm going to do is, I don't want them to be too far apart because if I think if I do them too far apart, it's just going to look bitty. So, what I'm going to do is, I need a length for the top and then I'm going to do a knot here. And I'll do a couple of loops in this knot so hopefully it'll be a bit thicker like so it's quite thick now so hopefully i with a bit of glue from the glue gun it should in theory hold it nicely and then let's do another so i just stick that there so i can see so if we do about The next knot about 10 centimetres. I think that shouldn't be too distant. So I need a bit. Try to figure this out. So if I hold it where I want. So if I hold it, so I measure it out. So I'm thinking to 10 centimetres from the last knot. And yeah, I'm going to have to pull a load through, but that's fine. So go one loop. Then two loops. I got caught. And then... As long as it's at the 10 centimetres, that's all I really care about. So they're evenly spaced, or well, more or less evenly spaced. Not 10, did I say 10? Pretty sure I said 10. Yeah, roughly 10. Obviously, where my fingers will be slipping through and everything, it's not going to be perfect, but still close enough. Well, I was doing it, I think I've gone wrong. Oh no, I meant to not mess up. And then number two. It will be quite fiddly this bit, but that is okay. I just thought I'd show, because otherwise it's going to get really boring for you guys for the next couple of weeks if I'm just decorating pens. And I don't want it just to be too boring for you all, so I thought if I show you exactly how I'm going to be doing it, and like I said, this is just trial and error, there's no way I know if this is going to work out or not, and I was just completely messed up there, well done Gemma. And there's one loop, and then the second loop. Right. And there we go, right. So I'm going to start with just these ones for now. Right, I'm just going to cut and then I am, um, so I've got what I want. So you're not just sitting me. See, seeing me sit here tying a load of knots, all right? Two secs. Right, so I'm all ready to go. I have my glue gum. I've got some beads ready. These are just the random colours I've picked. Um, so, yeah, and I've pulled out a one of the horrible green trays just in case. So, let's put on a splodge of glue. Sorry, that was my stomach. I'll just do that so it catches any drips. I've got to work quite quick to get this on. Now go to your end. Feed it through. 
once you feel fed for the end through, it should be quite easy. It's okay. Or you can always feed this on and have it ready. Let's try and get it roughly halfway and then just pull down just so you know it's secure. And now that is nice and secure. So I'm going to feed on the next one. I think that will be a bit easier so I don't feel so rushed before the because we all know that glue guns do the hot glue does glue um does dry quite quick if you're um uh, obviously um if you're not an adult please make sure you have an adult with you just to make sure this is done safely because I won't want little fingers getting burnt because Glue gun glue can burn, and that's the last thing I would want. And again, stick it in, hold it down. That's our second one done. I might as well just have all these fed on ready, mightn't I? Or a few of them. So let's go for this colour next. Then this colour. Let's feed a couple on so they're ready. And a yellow. And a pink. And a blue. Right. I've got a few fed on anyway. Ready and raring to go. So, next one. And again. And don't forget, like glue gun does get quite stringy and annoying, but that will come off when it's partly dried. Let's feed the next one down. And I am resting the hot glue on my ruler so I know it's not gonna get destroyed. The last thing I want to do is ruin my light pad. It does dry very, very quick, so just remember that. Right, next one, next one, next one, next one. It is quite fiddly, as you can see. But hopefully, if it comes out how I can imagine it in my head, and, I've, and, some, and some of you guys also said how you you can imagine it as well in your head and it should come out really nice. So hopefully we're all right and that's hot. Shut that down. Come on. Come down, come down. And on we go. And there we go. There's another one done. And let's feed down. Next one. So it is very very stringy and it does all get it can try to stick to itself luckily like the little stringy bits are quite easy to um separate and i'm just i'm falling everywhere here I'm going to have to do this next time on my dining room table. There we go. That was nice and stuck. And then the next one.
I'm going to stick it. Make sure it's stuck on. There we go. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five strings left. So let's do the feed on the next one. All right, so let's cut. Well, you see me do a good amount of putting them on. So let's skip. I'll stop recording and then you guys can see how this first string looks. All right, so give me some, well, it'll be my couple of minutes and yours literally a flash of time. All right, catching just two secs. So my first string of my B curtain is done. Obviously you can't really see how it's gonna really look like this at the minute, but we're making progress and that is the main thing. So yeah, and obviously it will be hanging down and everything else. So I try to not like keep close colours that are too close together. The spacing isn't perfect, but it's pretty good, I personally think. Maybe I need to just um, try and slide this one up a bit. But apart from that, the rest are good. And then like, in theory, when they're hanging up, they're like the breeze catches them, they should make a, a bit of a clacking noise. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But obviously, when I hang, when I do, they're going to be like that spaced apart, something like that. So yeah, it's going to be quite, it's still going to be quite a good, a big job. It's going to take me a few more weeks. So yeah, it's definitely not a small project. It's definitely a bigger project. It's just lots of little things to make one big thing this time, which I've never done before. So hopefully, like quite a few of you, few of you said in your minds, you can picture how it's going to come out too. And in your minds, it's going to come out really well too which is great so i'm not the only one that can picture these things in my mind and how my vision is going to end up and hoping it looks like what it how it how it is at the end so yeah so this is how it looks absolutely thrilled with it and hopefully this will just keep going on and on and on and on and on like a thing. And then I don't know how long it's going to take me. It could be another couple of weeks. It could be a month. You know, it's hard to tell with these things. So, yeah, it is a big project, but it should be well worth it. So, yeah. So that is it for this week's video. Thank you ever so much for watching. Let me comment down below how you think my bead curtain's coming along. At the moment, I think it's coming on really well. And I'll show you guys exactly how, like, to string them up and everything so if you guys are interested in doing this you can crack it cracking on yourself and you'll most probably if you see it started now you must be beat me to finishing it before i get it finished because i don't know how long this is going to take me to do it's going to take me a while i pretty much think so yeah um so that is it for this week's video thank you ever so much for watching don't forget to give me a big thumbs up comment down below what you think or how you think my big curtains coming along and if you haven't already please subscribe i really appreciate it thank you ever so much for watching and i shall see you all next time bye everyone